Good evening everyone, it's Christine here and I'm really excited to be starting off the creative process for the Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path. And I was so excited that I thought I'd pop on and share what I'm thinking for my first piece or my first section of the um, the down the garden path roll so sort of like a bigger version of a snippet roll well, mine is anyway um, I'm going to be having mine attached to the handle of a large wooden basket that I picked up on um, Facebook marketplace I shared it in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Facebook group so some of you may have seen it there now I'm taking a bit of a different twist on the prompt which is wild flowers and for some reason, when I heard the prompt, I just immediately thought, oh, I want to do wildflowers in moonlight. So I don't know what it was. Possibly it was because I'd been going through my fabrics and I'd been seeing quite a lot of my fabrics had um, darker backgrounds. Maybe it was the fact I started to watch the video um, late at night when the, the videos had just been um, released. Who knows what it was? But that's the first thing that jumped into my mind and I thought, hey, I'm just going to follow that thought and see where it goes. So I hope you can see this. I've just tried a different rig for my camera. I do need to actually probably buy myself a proper one of those arms that holds your mobile phone. I'll have to look up um, what they are or if anyone does have a recommendation for those. Very happy to hear those. So what I've got um, in my piece, and I haven't pinned anything down yet, I've just been playing with laying out all the fabric. Um, I start at the top of my piece, so this will be the piece um, attached to the cross um, rung of my wooden basket. Um, and I've got um, a moonlit scene. Now once I've taken you down this, I'm actually going to take the pieces off and kind of deconstruct it for you so you can see the layers um, and the different pieces that have gone into it. Um, so I'm starting with my moon, which hopefully you can see is sort of a glisteny um, moon. And then it's got a glisteny sky that look like um, sort of cloud, well, yeah, a bluey sky, possibly with stars or with some, some cloud cover of the stars. And then I've got some of my mountains, possibly Swiss mountains, maybe with some snow on them. Um, possibly with fields, so they've, they're cut out of different pieces of um, patterned, almost like a twill or something like that. Um, and then this one's a thicker, um, a thicker sort of woven, woven fabric, and it's actually got tiny little um, gold sequins, so small that you can, they just catch little bits of light. And then I've got a fabric here that's got like ripples across it. It's a translucent black fabric and it's got some shot through very fine um, silver so that's my water that's a little bay amongst the amongst the mountains a little lake um, with the mountains sort of cascading into that and then we come over to the other side um, and we've got my moonlit garden so I've selected fabrics here that have those darker backgrounds that might not be suitable for for other pieces and selected just a whole variety of them I've done just some broad um, cutting around them so you kind of get the shape of them but not cutting right close to them and then I'm planning a whole range of just little um, stitches um, I'll probably first of all tack them tack them down um, and then I'll put some actual visible um, stitches to add texture and I figure I can add other sort of um, flowers in muted tones um, yeah to to this section but I don't mind a bit of brightness here because I want the effect of the moon kind of catching catching the light on the flowers. So particularly, I was looking um, after I'd chosen the theme, looking at some some pictures online, and you kind of get those blues and those purples and those whites and greys um, catching the light of the moon. Then I've got this piece of patterned um, fabric, and I've cut out around a raised um, design on it to suggest my path. So. I've decided not to have my garden path at this stage coming down this way, but to have it kind of crisscrossing and separating the different um, sections of it. So that's that's my thinking. Who knows? It could evolve. We could end up with a path down the middle at some stage. There's nothing stopping us. There's nothing 
in this challenge or this project um, prescribing what we do. I've heard some people saying, oh, do we need to need to have the path? Do do whatever you want. See where your see where your inspiration takes you. Don't feel the need to um, follow someone else. Certainly take ideas um, from people if that's something you want to do. Or just go out there and just go, hey, I wanted to a moonlit wildflower garden, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's what I thought to myself. Um, and then coming down here, I've got some um, grasses um, in fringy bits um, along the path. And I might, I'll, when I sort of pin it all together, I'll probably position them down a little bit. And I've got some boulders with some moss on them. Then I've got still some shaded, but not quite as dark down here, coming into sort of browns and blues and darker greens. Um, and then coming forward into a garden that's lit in the morning light. So traveling from darkness down into light and then being in the light. And that means then I can sort of carry that, that lightness forward. I think this will probably be my only um, moonlit garden, but um, who knows? Who knows where this project will take us? So I promised that I would then um, show you how all the different sort of bits have been put together. So we've got our, I'll start from the bottom. Um, and what I might do is, yeah, I'll just move them over here and then I'll move them across. So we've got a bottom section that's just a piece of um, piece of fabric. Um, and it's from um, a piece of fabric that I actually bought when I started out um, doing slow stitch. And it's really beautiful. It's got some little, and I'll show it to you in a moment. It's got um, yeah little rabbits in the middle of this amazing sort of wildflower. Scene. So I just knew I wanted it to include that in this piece at least. Who knows, it might feature elsewhere as well because it's just such a gorgeous fabric. Um, and then on that I've actually just um, got some little cut out um, flowers from another fabric that I thought I'd just sort of put down the bottom and I've got a little butterfly as well. And then the next layer up, um, I've just layered behind that all sorts of um, little flowers. And sort of intersperse them but tried to kind of get my color going from bright and then into the slightly sort of darker colors I've got this piece of um, sort of greenery with blue background little leaves more flowers my mossy sort of rocks which I've just cut around so this is a fabric that's like got a backing bit that's got some translucent holes and then got a, um, a sort of a lace woven through it then I've got some pieces of this um, smaller design floral fabric and then I've just got a piece of this um, sort of cotton but with a fringed bit on it to suggest the grass um, that's the bit for my path and then I've got a bunch of these um, flowers on the back black fabric so just all different ones that I've just cut broadly around some of them are, are more synthetic um, quite relatively thin fabrics but just with the most beautiful designs I just love these love these purples um, I'll tell you about where I got some of my fabrics from which is another passion of mine um, sourcing great things and being able to divert things from um, from landfill so I will tell you about that in a moment particularly for those bods in Melbourne but I know there are other versions of the same sort of concept around the world so yeah these are all just all the all the little florals that I've just sort of grouped um, and interspersed in this layer of moonlit garden which again I can stitch over and then coming up we've got our mountains and I've just layered those across each other so the ones in the foreground um, sit across the others I'm trying to kind of suggest the bays by the way that I've um, laid them out um, and just working out how I want to layer them across this way. Just getting that nice balance as well because it's got the moon element. As I mentioned, I've used a piece of um, sort of translucent-y um, fabric that has a, um, a sort of pattern across it that way. And then it's shot down with almost, well, it's a silvery black really. It's almost like a black reflective. So it actually catches catches the light and has that lovely ripple effect. Now this is one of my favorite things for getting rid of fluff. It's one of those closed fluffers, but I use it on my bench when I get bits of bits of fluff around. Um, and now up the top, I've got a couple of layers. So I've got a piece of, again, meshy sort of translucent. On this side, it's got colorful 
um, little sparkly things, little circles that are shimmery. Um, but I'm just using the back where you just capture the, um, the sort of silvery colours. There's a couple of other colours that come through. And then I've overlaid that over this piece of um, blue textured fabric that also has a silvery um, part built into it. And then I've cut out of this thin, um, again, a sort of meshy, but with um, layers or texture on it. Um, I've cut my moon out of that. So I could have the moon sitting on the front, um, but that kind of is pretty full on. So I decided to put it behind um, the piece of mesh so it's visible there, but it's not like full on in your face. So they are all my little bits and pieces. I'm just gonna roll them up and get them off the, surf off the surface here because I don't wanna lose them when I show you my fabrics. So I'm just gonna take them over behind me. Get rid of my scissors. Um, now what I've done here is I've just stitched together two um, parts of a, it's not a felt, but it's some sort of woven fabric, but it's actually really easy to um, stitch through. Um, so I tested that before I, before I started, got a needle and just made sure that it was going to, um, like Rachel did I think in, in her video, um, made sure that it would actually um, be easy to, to stitch with, um, but I wanted something a bit more sturdy than just a really thin um, cotton because I sometimes find with that thin cotton it just sort of puckers a bit and things. Um, so that's what I'm gonna start with, who knows? I might go, go over to the, the thin cottons, but I had quite a lot of a supply of this um, from my fabric samples that I'll show you in a moment. So that's the base. Again, I'll get that out of the way so I don't lose it. Now, in terms of the fabrics, um, you've probably heard me talk about, but I'm going to talk about them again, the reverse art truck. Um, so I'm in Melbourne, in Victoria, in Australia, and I think there's at least two reverse art trucks, I think possibly just two in Victoria. And they collect supplies from manufacturers and other producers in Victoria or in Melbourne. Um, and then they offer them to the public or to community groups who want to use them in their art or their craft or their activities. So lots of schools go here um, to get, get materials. Um, you can fill up a giant um, rubbish bag for $30 um, or you can just get a smaller quantity and they'll just price it by the, the size of the bag you have. But you can get a lot of amazing stuff for a very small amount of money. So I've got just an absolute wealth of um, these fabrics. So this is a piece of that felty similar to the base that I just showed you. It's got black on the background and then blue there and then you get sometimes smaller sections as well. I'm just going to jump through and show you some of the things. So our, the water that um, is amongst the mountains, that's from this fabric sample. Some of the flowers, beautiful florals. Um, the mountains um, in my scene were made out of that and this was also used for the mountains. Um, that was again another sample um, used for the grass. This one I was pondering on using for shadows. I just had to show you though how beautiful is that. It's like a, a large format um, lace. Just very cool. This was another one I was going to use and I've actually cut some pieces which I'll probably use in something else. But it's got some really great texture to it and I was actually going to use it as some um, tree um, trunks but I'm sure that will end up featuring in something else um, and then some more of the mountains and just shows you the great little different bits um, and pieces you get so I was sort of thinking oh maybe I don't have that many greens of fabrics or browns or things like that but when I went through my stash here I went yep there is a lot there's a lot there sorry I'll just pop that one over here um, this is the one that I made one of the mountains out of and I don't know if you can see on the video but you might be getting some little flashes of the tiny little gold um, sequins. Um, so yeah, that's, that's some of the fabric there. Um, use this fabric and just cut um, some of the little small flower sprays out but not the bigger ones because they weren't kind of the right, the right size. This one I used some of the smaller samples for my um, moss covered fabric rocks some more florals, some more mountains, 
Um, oh, that's my that's the one I used for my path because it's got that great sort of almost paved look. Some more mountains. This was the sky, so that's the sky on the the coloured side, and that's the sky on the more silver side. Again, that's part of the sky. So it's quite a sizable bit you get for a fabric sample and when you're doing slow stitch you've got heaps heaps left to use or to share um these i just cut some little like palmy from things i think it's actually a christmas fabric because i noticed it had some had some holly in it i should have used it when i was doing the last general stitchery again just cut some of the um yeah the fl uh, flower sprays out of there this one is just one of those um sections in that mid-range from the the moonlit garden through to the lighter garden um, again these pieces also came just from the their big bins of, of fabrics and not on the fabric cards um, but yeah it's just amazing you get like made in Italy amazing um, yeah cottons and linens and just all sorts of things and just the most the coolest designs that you probably otherwise just wouldn't be able to access so yeah I can't get enough of them I think my local one um, which is sort of near Berwick is closed at the moment. Um, but it, there's a one in Ringwood as well, but I think my one opens again in February, which will be pretty soon. So yeah, I've just cut out smaller sections of that. And then these are just some of the other, the other ones. Again, I think I've just used some of the smaller blue flowers, but yeah, just, just gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. So these are synthetic, so I wasn't sure whether I'd be using them in my slow stitching, but this is the perfect opportunity to, to do that. So yeah, all they are all samples from the reverse art truck. So, and the great thing on those hangers is I can just hang them up in my craft cupboard. And then when I have a project like this, I can just go through and just swatch through and go, yep, that one, that one, that one. Um, then these are some of the other fabrics I've used, which were just from my fabric stash. That one I think is from The Sewing Lair, which is an online op shop. Um, this one is definitely from The Sewing Lair in my most recent order. This is the fabric I was mentioning earlier that's got rabbits on it. And it's kind of quirky, kind of strange because it looks like a very sort of serious looking rabbit, but just surrounded by the most glorious, glorious florals. So I love that. So I was like, I really have to use it. I think I used a tiny piece of this in, um, maybe in Roxy's Journal of Stitchery or maybe in the 52 flags, which I completed recently. Um, this was another piece of fabric I brought early on in my slow stitching um, because I just loved the, the butterflies. So I'll probably be using some of those butterflies throughout the project. Um, another bit of sewing layer fabric where I've just cut out some of the smaller smaller flowers another bit of sewing layer fabric that one I think also sewing layer and then these um, fabrics here were from um, a 98 year old lady who was um, giving up her sewing and her daughter was um, selling a box of all of her leftover um, fabrics and that was just on my local Facebook marketplace again back when I started my slow stitching and so I jumped at the chance to just get lots of lovely little bits and pieces and they're just yeah beautiful fabrics beautiful and soft and really interesting designs so quite a lot of fabrics um, have gone into that piece but just very little sections of them um, so a lot of these I actually have bigger bigger sections of um, but uh, yeah only need a little bit for this particular project. So that is all from me for now. I'll pin it, I'll, I'll reassemble it all and then I'll pin it all down, I'll stitch it um, all down and then I'll probably come back and share some of the process of then the stitching that I'm planning to do over the top as well as um, no doubt how I evolve the project as I go. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you are all doing really well. Um, I hope you're, those of you taking part are having fun. I'm hoping if you're watching this video and you're not part of our little um, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery community, you can find us um, on Facebook or check out the videos by Roxy Creations and Roxy Creations by Sarah. So Rachel and Sarah are the sisters um, who organise this project um, and they have great videos that share 
their projects um, and their ideas and prompts and just lots of lovely um, stories about life as well. So thank you for tuning in um, and I look forward to seeing what you're all going to create. Um, have a great evening and a great weekend, everyone. Okay, bye.